Hi, and welcome to Research to Ready, where we're going to talk about the connection between Google Research and Google Cloud products. I'm Dale Markowitz. I'm an applied AI engineer here at Google Cloud, and I'm joined by Nikita. Hi, everyone. I'm Nikita Namjoshi, and I'm a developer advocate at Google Cloud. So Google Research powers all different parts of Google. Google products like Gmail, Google Search, Lens, Translate, and it also powers tons of different Google Cloud tools. Like, for example, you might be familiar with BigQuery, Google's super fast uh, data store. Well, BigQuery actually started as a result from research. Uh, we have an internal version called Dremel. Or you might be familiar with TensorFlow, which is one of the most popular open source tools for building machine learning models. Well, TensorFlow also started out of Google research and then became an open source tool and now is used in all sorts of uh, Google Cloud machine learning pipelines. Today, we're going to talk about uh, two recent Google Cloud offerings that come directly out of research. So the first one has to do with vector search. Now, nowadays in machine learning, the technique of vector search is really popular. Uh, in fact, if you saw the demo at the beginning of, an applied, of our Applied AI Summit, you saw Nikita and Zach walk you through a demo that used vector search to do question answering. So the idea works like this. Let's say that you've got a database of a million news articles, or maybe like in the case of the demo, uh, Q&A answers. Uh, or maybe even Google web pages. And you want to be able to search through all those text documents and supply a result that's relevant. Well, the simple way to do this is with keyword matching. But keyword matching is a bit simplistic. It's not exactly what you want. What you really want to build for text search is something called semantic search. So the idea of semantic search is to take a piece of text and find other similar pieces of text based not on overlapping words, but on similar semantic meaning. Uh, by the way, this is the problem more or less of Google search. When you go into google.com and you type into a text box for a question, uh, we try to reply with a semantically relevant web page as a search result. And the same thing when you, for example, go on YouTube and you type something, what's a semantically relevant video? For many, many years, this type of problem was extremely difficult for computers uh, to solve. But in the past decade, it's become solvable thanks to a technique called vector embeddings. Actually, one of the first groups to really work on this problem in terms of text embedding was Google Research. Uh, back in 2013, we published a result called word to vec which was a way of embedding individual words as vectors. If you do any work in NLP, you probably have encountered word to vec at some point. So this is what word to vec looks like. The idea is that we take words and we map them to points in space so that semantically uh, similar synonymous words are mapped closely to the same areas in space. And we're to vec enable tons of different NLP apps. But nowadays, we can do even better than embedding individual words. We can actually embed whole sentences or paragraphs or blocks of text or articles with something called a universal sentence encoder. So this is another machine learning model, also published by Google Research in 2018. And it's made lots of text search applications way easier. In fact, this is the one of the most popular uh, TensorFlow models that you can download. Um, so, for example, if you wanted to build this, well, here's one new news article and I want to find another one that's like it, you can embed the text using the universal sentence encoder module. Now, often when we build awesome models here in Google uh, Research, we make them publicly available and open source through something like TensorFlow Hub. So you can take this universal sentence encoder, download it from Hub, and use it in your own apps. So the way that we do text similarity search is with text embeddings. But nowadays, we're embedding all sorts of different types of data. For example, with image embeddings, we can do something like reverse image search. So maybe I take a, I take a picture of my shoes, and then I say, find me a shoe that looks similar. We can also embed users and customers. For example, maybe we want to find a cluster of customers with similar buying habits. Or maybe we want to do a multimodal embedding, where we embed like an image and a text, and we see if they're describing the same thing. Now, oftentimes, we think a lot about these cool embedding models because they're, they're very exciting, but we often don't uh, pay attention to the more practical aspect of, if we're going to do finding similar vectors, how do we actually run the calculation to find what vectors are similar? Um, usually, we use a distance metric, something like cosine similarity or dot product, but these are mathematical operations that can be really computationally costly, especially if you do, have to do them on a really, really large vector data set. Vector data set. So the question is, Given a query vector, how do we find its nearest neighbors as quickly and efficiently as possible? Uh, we solve this with vector similarity search techniques like k-nearest neighbors or approximate nearest neighbor search. And it's one of the most critical steps in uh, neural deep retrieval architectures. OK, 
So I want to talk about Matching Engine, which is a new product out of Google Cloud that's uh, designed to allow you to do this efficiently. So it allows you to do vector search uh, with low latency and high scalable and really, really quickly. So the way that this is possible is thanks to a, re a result out of Google Research. In 2020, we made significant headway in solving this problem of doing vector search really quickly thanks to a new algorithm called SCAN. So again, the idea is to speed up the calculation of the distance between vectors. And whenever we want to do this at scale for uh, millions or even billions of vectors, we have to be able to approximate that calculation in some way. And so one of those popular techniques to do this is called quantization, where we take a bunch of millions of vectors and then we map them to a smaller vector data set that we compute distances on. So the scan algorithm that came out of Google Research found a more efficient way of creating this smaller approximation set so that when you do a vector search on this, this quantized set, you get both, both more accurate results and results more efficiently. So we use this new algorithm to build an internal version of Matching Engine that actually powers tons of different Google products like Google Search and YouTube. YouTube. And now through Matching Engine, we've made it available to you. So when you want to be able to search through billions of vectors, you can also do it quickly and efficiently using this algorithm. So that's Matching Engine. Uh, we're very proud of that. And now I'm going to hand it over to Nikita, who's going to talk about another Google product that was built in strong uh, collaboration with research. Uh, take it away, Nikita. Thanks so much, Dale. So when you start working on a new ML problem, it's not uncommon to use the latest architectures from research as your starting point. But have you ever used models like NASNet or AmoebaNet or SpineNet? It might surprise you to learn that these state-of-the-art model architectures weren't hand-designed. They were actually created by a technique called neural architecture search. Neural architecture search, or NAS, is a technique for automating the design of neural networks. In a typical NAS setup, you have a controller which proposes ML models that are sampled from a search space, which is the range of architectures that can be represented. Then it trains and evaluates the models and it iterates thousands of times to find the model that best meets the objective. How did this all start? Well, in 2016, Google researchers published a paper called Neural Architecture Search with Reinforcement Learning. In this paper, they showed how to use a recurrent network to generate model descriptions of neural networks. They trained this RNN with reinforcement learning to maximize the expected accuracy of the generated architectures on a validation set. Using this method, they were able to design a novel architecture for the CIFAR 10 data set that rivaled the best human invented architecture in terms of test set accuracy. Since that paper, the field has continued to grow, including non-reinforcement learning based techniques and the introduction of PyGlove, which is the symbolic language that can be used to help convert your ML code into a NAS program. In addition to research, we started to see adoption of neural architecture search across Google and other Alphabet teams. In 2018, the team at Waymo used NAS to help discover models with significantly lower latency, but results of the same quality. And many of the architectures found during the search showed creative combinations of convolutions, pooling, and deconvolution operations in ways that might have gone undiscovered with hand tuning alone. The team behind Pixel 6 used NAS to automate the process of designing models, incentivizing the search algorithms to discover networks that achieved higher quality while meeting latency and power requirements. The latency and power requirements were really crucial because these models were being run on the Pixel phones. For face detection, they discovered a model that achieved the same accuracy as an optimized baseline model, but consuming less than 70% of the energy. And NAS doesn't just work for image use cases. When it comes to NLP, the Pixel 6 team used NAS to discover language models with up to two times higher hardware utilization, allowing for larger and more accurate models compared to their baselines. So what does all this have to do with you as a Google Cloud user? Well, Vertex AI NAS is a managed service for performing neural architecture search. What started out as an experimental research project is now a GA product. Vertex AI NAS works in two stages. The first stage uses a smaller representation of full training called a proxy task. In stage two, a full training occurs using the top scoring models from the first stage. You can use the Cloud Console UI to monitor and manage jobs and kickstart the search from a notebook. 
With Vertex AI NAS, you can optimize models for accuracy, latency, and memory all in the same trial. And what I think is really exciting is that now instead of waiting for the next state of the art architecture to be published in the paper, you can actually be the one to discover that architecture for yourself. Today, we talked about the critical role research has played in both Vertex AI Matching Engine and Vertex AI, Natural, Vertex AI Neural Architecture Search. We hope this gives you an idea of how Google research has deep product impact and how you can take advantage of this cutting edge research as a Vertex AI user. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much, Nikita. Enjoy the rest of the Applied ML Summit.